we're back at Capital Casino playing in the 1 3, $500 match to stack. This is going to cover two days worth of playing. This is day one. The game is fairly active. I haven't been able to make a hand whatsoever so far. Stole a few small plots and uh, just, you know, trying to tread water until I find something. Here we have a straddle pot to $6. I open up for 20, end up getting three callers, including a call from the low jack. So we're going to go four ways to a flop with 90 in the pot. And the flop comes out pretty darn good for our particular hand. And it's also good for our range. It comes ace, four, deuce with two clubs. So we don't have a club in our hand, but we do have top pair. The majority of the time I would just lead with this with my standard C bet. But on occasion I like to check back strong hands, so that's what I did. And the low jack ends up betting $40. Everybody else kind of folds out and it's back to me. This is an easy call for $40. I expect to be best here most often. Most likely he has an ace with a weaker kicker and I have a pretty good kicker. Anyway, the turn card comes as the seven of spades. I decided to check it over to him. I thought about leading to deny equity to flush draws, but I figured he was probably going to bluff with it anyway. Might as well let him just go off. He ends up putting out a bet for $75, which has me a little bit concerned because it feels like a little bit more value than, uh, say, a bluff. So I'm going to think that maybe he has an ace with a flush draw, maybe something as good as ace seven of clubs. In that case, I'm in real trouble, but I got to put in the call for 75 and we get to see a river card of a jack of hearts. Not the best card in the world because now ace jack beats us. But the good news is all the flush draws missed. So I check it over. He decides to bet 120. Uh, again, this looks like a value bet all the way. He seemed very relaxed while he made the bet. He seems relaxed while he's waiting for me to do anything. I'm trying to get a read off of him. I kind of stack my chips around and I count out for the call for 120. And I kind of like maybe make a little bit of move forward with it. And he doesn't seem to... Uh, too scared and I really came close to just folding this but the pot outs were so good and I played this so weakly anyway he didn't show me the goods he had pocket deuces flopped a set and got max value out of a pigeon like me so my chip stack got smacked around really good from that last hand I was waiting to rebuy until after I went through the blinds and here I am I wake up with ace four suited there was a ten dollar raise I only called probably should have squeezed not a good play on my part. I put in the call. Flop comes. I make a flush draw. Check it over. Planning the check raise. The guy checks it back. And now the small blind leads on the turn card of a nine of diamonds. He's been leading big on weak turn cards. I don't put them on much. But uh, I'm hoping to make my flush. And I think I could probably steal this away from him with a scare card. River card comes as a king of hearts, which is kind of interesting. It completes the jack 10, and now he leads out for $30, which is a fairly small bet. Feels more like a blocker bet, like something he would do with a hand like queen 10, maybe queen jack, just because he doesn't want to face a big bet. The problem is my stack isn't that great. I only have $146 uh, dollars left behind. So I jam it in there because I just think he's weak. I think I can get them off of one pair of hands, especially if it's like a queen 10 or a queen jack. And plus, I don't think I can win with ace high. So he goes into the tank and he's in there forever. I am going to cut and paste this thing way, way, way forward because he spends at least three minutes thinking about this. He eventually puts in the call. I tell him I miss and he shows nine seven for two pair. I think if I had my $120 I lost on that previous hand in my stack, I would have got this bluff through. I think you should ask yourself, would you be making this play if you weren't stuck? I mean, I understand wanting to take a pot away from somebody who you feel is weak. But is this the right spot? You have $10 invested. He bet 40 Why are you calling? Just let it go. And if you're going to steal it, make sure you have enough chips in your stack to take it back. I mean, you're doing trying to bluff them off with a short stack? It's not going to work. I got another 500 in my stack. Decide to open up with 7-4 clubs under the gun. Under the gun plus one raises to 40. 
yeah, I got my hand cut in the cooking jar, but I got it cut in a really good spot because this guy has a big stack and I've seen him play this way and he only does it with like aces, kings, or queens. That's it. He's not doing this light at all. He has a big pair. And ideally 7-6 or 7-8 suited plays really good against big pairs. 7-4 clubs is close enough for me because he will not fold an over pair. So if I can end up making a hand that beats a pair of aces, stacks are going to go in and I think I'll double up. Anyway, I put in the call. So we're heads up, $84, out of position with a piece of junk. And the flop comes queen, jack, nine with two clubs. I, of course, check it over to him. He puts out a bet for $45. This is just the kind of action I want. I know he has something really good and I'm just hoping to make my flush. I put in the call, praying for a club. Instead, we get a seven of diamonds, which isn't a bad card. It gives me a little bit of additional equity. Not only do I have my flush draw still, I also could catch a seven or a four. I check it over to him. He bets 75 and I'm going, okay, this is good. I got a lot of chips behind. He got a big stack in front of him. He's not going to be slowing down anytime soon, especially if a seven or a four comes. So... I'm sticking with the plan. If I can beat aces, the chips are going in. I think for a while, and I put in the call for 75. Praying for a good river card. Please let it be a club, a seven, or a four, and it's a seven of spades. Oh boy, here we go. Well, there's six combos of aces that I beat, six combos of kings that I beat, and three combos of queens that I lose to. So according to my math, that means I'm going to win this 80% of the time. I check it over to him. He thinks for a brief moment, puts out a value bet for $90, just like I would expect him to do with his entire hands that I just mentioned. And now it's time to spring the trap. So I flick in the chip, go all in, and he snap calls. I show my hand and he shows pocket queens. So we get stacked again. My loose raise from under the gun got me in trouble, but I really liked the way I played this hand after that point. I think in most of the cases with this hand, I would have got doubled up, but this is the 20% where I didn't. I had him pegged on aces, kings, or queens. He just happened to have queens this time. So I wanted that pot to be as big as possible for the 80% times I, I was gonna win. So that's why I shoved. I did rebuy again, so I was in for $1,500. Played for about another half hour, 45 minutes before finally calling it quits. Ended up losing 900 total for the day. So not too bad. If this hand went the other way, it would have been a whole different story, but there's always another day. So funny story about Zeus. Um, came home the other night and it was late and I went upstairs to go to bed. He slept downstairs that night. And uh, I heard some noise downstairs and I couldn't figure out what it was. So I got out of bed, walked downstairs and someone left the TV on. And uh, I caught this uh, nice little picture for you. So I always wondered how Zeus got so good at poker. So he was uh, doing some homework late at night and I caught him in the act. It was just nice watching some real poker players play. Not someone who's playing ace four and calling a big turn bet or seven four suited from under the gun. I think maybe you should be watching the show. This is day two of our poker adventure. We decided to play a little bomb pot. Everyone threw in $15. We're doing an eight way bomb pot in this particular hand. One person did sit out. Anyway, the board is not uh, very favorable to our hand. We have king nine offsuit, flop is ace eight deuce. We have some runner runner backdoor flush draw for a poor flush. We just check it. We're going to be giving up on this hand, but it gets checked all the way around. So, hey, we get a free card. And what a free card it was. Uh, two of spades. Absolutely nothing for us. We're just going to be folding this in the action. We check it around. It gets checked around again. We get to see a river card of a king of diamonds. All right, we check it again. Now there's one player out in the hijack who decides just to go all in with a short stack. I think I'm going to be chopping this most of the time. If he slow played a flush, an ace, or a deuce, uh, 
good for him. He's going to get my money. So I flick it in there and everyone else folds out and he just says, yeah, I missed. I got queen high. And I go, okay. And I turn over my king and uh, we take down this gift of $254. So starting off pretty good. Very happy to have that money into my stack. So still stacking their chips from that bond pot. We look down at two black kings, open for a raise to 15 from under the gun. We end up getting four callers uh, going to the flop. So pretty good sized pot here. And we got kings and we're not great position looking for a favorable flop. And it comes ace high with two spades. We do have second pair and a backdoor flush draw, but this is not a particular hand I'm fond of especially with four other players. I check it. A player out back ends up putting in a bet for $30. And another player thinks about it for a while before calling. I'm pretty much done with the hand. Once the other player folds out, I just get rid of my cards. Sometimes you just gotta let them go. Next interesting spot. I'm in middle position, open for a raise to 15 with Jack 10 suited. End up getting a couple callers. So we're gonna head off to the flop with $48 in the pot. Flop comes seven, seven, 10 with two hearts. So unless I'm running up against a seven or 10 with a better kicker, I should be good. I bet out $20. I get one caller from the player in the hijack who's a friend of mine and a vlog supporter. The other player folds out looking for a favorable turn card and it comes a black seven. So we fill up, but I decided to bet again, this time for 40. I would also do this with my bluffs, like ace high or king high, trying to price out flush draws or straight draws. So I haven't been playing too many hands. I look down at queen jack offsuit. There's one player who limps in front of me who also watches the vlog. I decided to try to isolate him for $20. So I put in a raise, end up getting a couple callers. So we're gonna go three ways to a flop with 64 in the pot. And the flop comes good, queen, eight, eight. So I have top pair and there is a flush draw out there and a pair of eights. I decided to check it because I like checking back some strong hands occasionally. Turn card's a blank, three hearts. It's checked to me again. It's time to get a little value. I put out a bet for $35. The other player puts in the quick fold and now it's back to the vlog supporter to my right. And he watches enough of my vlogs to probably know that I'm probably not super strong here. And he can probably try to take this one away with a little raise. And I think that's exactly what he's trying to do. He puts in a raise to 80. Now, I don't have a great kicker with my queen. And I definitely can't beat an 8. But if he's making a move on me, I'm going to let him continue. So I decided just to put in the call. Planning to call down just about any size bet on the end because I think he's uh, making a move. River card comes as an eight of spades, probably the best card I could catch. Now I got a full house, don't have to worry about my kicker, and it's less likely he has an eight. But if he has a bluff, he's going to continue and he's going to probably do it at a pretty good size. He decides on $125. Naturally, I'm going to be calling. I look over at him, seeing if I can see any kind of interesting reactions when he puts out this bet. And I think for a moment, and then I decide to put in the call. He tosses his cards in the muck, and we win this one. There's one limper from middle position. I look down at ace-king offsuit in the cutoff. I decide to raise to 20. Player on the button puts in the call. So does the big blind and the early limper. So we're going to go four ways to a flop with 81 in the pot. Flop comes down really good. Ace, eight, seven, rainbow. So we got top pair, top kicker. Uh, there's no real flush draws, but there are a lot of straight draws. So when check two, I end up betting $40. Looking back on this, I probably should go more like 60 on this particular flop because there are so many draws possible. Player on the button puts in the call. So does the small blind and so does the limper. So. Didn't lose anyone. We're going to go to a turn card with 241 in the pot. And it is a beautiful two of spades. So no flush draws out there. Looks like a complete blank. It gets checked over to me. Now it's time to go for some extra value. I decided to size up to three quarter pot and I end up betting 175. 
I expect that anyone that had a hand on the flop would have been raising because let's face it, if you flop two pair, say like seven, eight or ace, eight or anything like that, you would want to protect it, especially with three other players in the pot. So I'm fairly certain my hand is the best at this point. So a big bet to get extra value out of non-believing hands like ace jack, ace queen, maybe ace 10. I think I'm going to get paid off. But the player in the big blind has some other ideas. He decides to shove for his remaining stack, which is only $240. So it's going to cost me $65 more to call. At this point, I'm trying to figure out what kind of hands he had. If he had a set of eights or sevens, I think he would have raised on the flop. If he had a seven or ace eight or even seven eight, he would have raised. So the only thing I can think of is he has a hand like ace deuce of clubs, ace deuce of hearts. I get him priced in. I flick in the call. River card comes as a beautiful king of clubs. He rolls over ace deuce offsuit. So he sucked out on the turn and I re-sucked on the river. So we got a big pot coming our way. Got a little bit lucky on the end, but uh, that's the way it goes. I was definitely getting the right price to be calling and I'm glad the best hand pre-flop ends up winning this one. And for our final hand of the day, there were a bunch of limpers and I looked down at ace eight suited on the button. Decided just to try to steal the blinds, raise it up to 25. Player in the small blind puts in the call. He is a solid player who I have a lot of respect for. Everybody else folds out, so I'm going to tread cautiously on this particular hand. He could have a very big hand at this point. He checks it over to me. I'm just going to check this one back. I know a seabed is what I would normally do in this spot, but as I said, I'm going to be a little bit cautious. Turn card comes as an eight of clubs. Very good turn card for our hand. In fact, it's probably the only one I would feel comfortable betting. So when he checks again, I'm going to go for some value here. Put out a bet at $30. If I get raised, I'm going to hate it. I'm going to probably end up folding because I think he might have been trapping with a big hand. But when he puts in the call, I'm putting him more on a drawing hand. River card comes, completes the backdoor flush draw. Not something I'm going to be betting. So I check it back. He says, you're good. I missed. And I show him the eight and we take down this final pot. So we lost 900 on that first day. Second day, we won 900, so we're back to even. I think the important thing to realize is that you're going to have bad days. You're going to have days where things just don't go your way, and you're going to have days where everything seems to be going right. The main thing is just to try to be consistent and play well, whether you're playing on a good day or a bad day. Just make solid decisions, and things will eventually work out. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate your support, and thanks for making it to the end of the video. It really helps all those uh, algorithms. And uh, if you haven't liked, subscribed, please do so. Also, you can click that notification bell. That way you know as soon as I put out a new video. And, uh, you know, until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you soon.